So it's getting to the point where every time I open this game, I just have to listen to the theme song and the main menu. You know how people are fans of bad movies? I'm like that, but with comically bad songs. It, it's just so bad. <laughs> It's really hard not to sit there and just chuckle to yourself for three minutes. Oh well. Kylo's already half done with his square. I discreetly glanced at his knelt frame. He held an updated photograph to compare the new position of the sediments. A sentimental swing song started and I quickly hit next on my phone. I thought I'd deleted that from my list. While skipping through my collection, I heard voices above me and looked up, wondering what the hullabaloo was about. Two people not doing their jobs, apparently. On the narrow industrial catwalk, Deandre and Chantal were engaged in a lively conversation. Judging from her laughter, he was telling a humorous story, animated with exaggerated motions. Sho waited anxiously a few paces behind them, his hands occupied with two buckets. He looked uncertain as to whether to ask them to move or to retreat instead. Finally, Sho uttered something low and apologetic, catching their attention, and the pair separated. Giandre shuffled backward to the edge of the catwalk, and I gasped in horror. Look out! His foot stumbled over a cement block which contained a wooden beam with a heat lamp clamped to it. Sho dropped the buckets and lunged forward with Chantal to grab Deandre. However, they couldn't stop the items, and he collided in two, and they tipped over the catwalk. And I instinctively dove for Kyla, who was unaware of the events. Right, okay. So... He fell over these things here and is falling in here. There was a loud crash behind us as I tackled him out of harm's way, and I crashed his head protectively. Cradled. I was going to say crash doesn't seem like the appropriate verb there at all. I cradled his head protectively when we hit the hard ground. Dirt from the bucket spilled through the catwalk and rained down on us. I glanced back to view the damage. Are you all okay? Cherie briskly walked along the lower catwalk toward our pit and fearfully peered over. I scooted back when I realised I still had Kyla pinned to the floor. It appeared safe enough and Kyla sat up, immediately examining the mess. I heard perturbed voices from above, including Deandre's. I turned to Cherie first, doing my best to ignore my visible shaking. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really fine. Probably not convincing anyone. My earbuds had come loose and I stuffed them in my pocket to mask my trembling. Y y yeah, we're fine. Careful, the heat lamp shattered. Don't cut yourself. Uh, I stood up cautiously, taking note of the disturbed art and the wooden beam that leaned light, light right against my square. It would have hit me if I hadn't moved, all along with the heat lamp and cement block that were right by my feet. Oh man, that was close. For safety reasons, I approached the ladder, but paused when Kyler unleashed an enraged rant at Deandre. Whatever Deandre desperately tried to counter, Kyla would cut him off and gesture wildly to the mess. Calm Kyla down, clean up the mess. There is nothing which is going to calm him down. It's an accident. He is massively overreacting. Let, what can you do about an accident? <laughs> they were telling a story. He told them to stop. He fell over. And then shit happened, right? It, it's nothing you can do. At least I could remove this heat lamp. I knelt down, but when my fingers grazed the edge, I let out a pained gasp and reflectively moved my hand. I stuck the burned fingertip into my mouth. You went to clean up... How we ever got past primary school is beyond me. My reaction caused Kyla to turn around, dropping his to tend to me. What are you doing? You shouldn't touch any of this wreck. Come on, let's get out of here. Right. Are either of you injured? Kyla rubbed the back of his neck while I wriggled my injured finger. Small burn, I think I'll live. Hang on, I wanted to go for the DeAndre option. None of this is the right option. Hang on, when... Where's the choice? I need to do the other one, right? We can't scroll forward, I don't know why. Hey, stop shouting at... When I touched his shoulder, he flinched and glared at me in disbelief. What? Calm down, yelling at him isn't helping. Melissa, his clumsiness nearly got us killed. I... <laughs> I know about that. How can you be so composed? Both of you, please climb out of there. We'll get this sorted once you're safely out. There's glass everywhere. So basically, someone had to be hurt for him to start giving a fuck. Like, in order for him to stop being angry or doing anything practical, someone had to literally put themselves through pain first. Good. Good. We fell silent and obediently followed the, her orders. Are either of you injured? Kyla rubbed the back of his neck. 
Okay, so that wasn't DeAndre Opson, just a can we do anything with Kyler option, which no, 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 no. I'm fine. Was dazed briefly when Melissa saved me, but I didn't hit my head or anything. I put a hand on my chest and exhaled loudly in relief. Oh good, I didn't mean to tackle you like that, it all happened so fast. From the corner of my eye, I saw curious students staring down at us, forcing a grin. I gave an awkward wave. Bonjour, je suis le clumsy. We're A-OK, -okay, no harm done. Oh, you obnoxious American. Hopefully my cheerful tone pacified their anxiety. DeAndre looked as if he was about to throw up from sheer guilt he was that pale. And he's not pale at all, but sure. He shuffled a few paces down and grabbed the railing as he leaned over to get a better view. You sure? I'm very sorry about that. I'll clean up the mess and everything. I wasn't thinking and... What on earth? Hey, stop judging! Christ, you're the one with tattoos and a ponytail! We know who's made worse life choices here, okay? We've just had a momentary lapse of concentration. You've kept that around for years! Hendrik approached... <laughs> I'm joking. Hendrik approached DeAndre, who began pointing and explaining in fretful French. Dexter was a few steps behind Hendrik, and I assumed she was the one who alerted Hendrik to the incident. Sho and Chantal joined in while sh with Sho stammering profusely, while DeAndre watched him in surprise. I guessed Sho felt partially responsible for the whole thing too. Well, I mean, he would. Now what? Kyla and I exact can't exactly continue with our excavation. I don't mind cleaning up. Goodness no, you two experienced a close call just a moment ago. If anything, it's the main team's fault for overlooking such a precarious setup. <laughs> well, let's mutter about that. I think it was an accident, but... I think not blaming us for it is a bit silly. Take a break or you can switch to the lab. We'll take care of this straight away. I know Augustine isn't going to be thrilled about this. I'll try to clean- Stop fucking guilt tripping me, Jesus! So passive aggressive. I'll try to clean up as much as I can before he sees the full mess. God, her mouth. Okay, so this is what I don't get. I know it's an artistic choice, but look at her mouth position there. It is ridiculously out of place and then it's in the normal place. Why change it? Is there no other way to convey the emotion of uh without the mouth being so precariously low? Uh, whatever. Before I could protest, she shooed the both of us away, encouraging us to get some fresh air. Once we were outside, it wasn't until I gazed at the forest that I noticed my heart was beat rapidly. Really? You were trembling. Uh, guess that scared me more than I thought. I leaned against the wall heavily to support myself. It terrified me to know that if I was a moment slower, Kyla, or most myself, judging from when the equipment smashed, could have been seriously hurt or worse. You'd have just had a bit of glass in you, it's fine. You, no one would die, okay? Dying is ridiculous. No one was ever going to die. Are you truly alright? The words were hesitant but sympathetic. I tilted my head in his direction. Yeah, obviously a little shaken, but I'll be fine. I'm glad you are physically unharmed at any rate. I thank you for shielding me. How were you able to react that fast? Well, I saw it coming from a mile off, basically. I was fortunate enough to hear the chatter, then I saw it happen. It was like in slow motion. I could see it coming, and yet I wasn't able to pre How would you have been able to prevent it? It was like four or five feet above you, and you're sitting on the floor. Like, you have a split second to react. I knew you wouldn't be able to hear what went on, and I couldn't exactly warn you. Must have been confusing for me. I really like this music. <laughs> Why couldn't the people who did this background music do the theme song? This is awesome! Uh, me tackling you to the ground for supposedly no reason. Blame it on my dancing reflexes. Uh, well, I had no clue what was happening until I looked past you again. Thank you. If you hadn't, sure, fucking let me done it. He trailed off, unable to finish, and I nodded understandingly. It's nothing. The less it's brought out, the better. I don't want to dwell on it, or I'll make myself sick with worry of the, the could have beens. Sure, I'll do lab work in the meantime. You, I'm going to remain here. He needs time to look at plants wistfully. Right, later then. I departed, grateful for the fresh air. Halfway down the path to the museum, DeAndre called for me. He skiddled, then stopped a few paces before me, leaning over with his hands on his knees to catch his breath. He must have been sprinting like mad to catch up. There you... Oh, I really wanted to apologise about the whole thing. I... 
I mean, it wasn't your fault. It was an accident. What dick sort of turns around and be like, oh, I don't fucking care if it's an accident. It's your fucking fault, right? You know, like, it's not like we've warned him several times to not do that. It's not like this is the sixth time it's happened. You're not hurt? I'm fine. Kyler and I made it through unharmed. Did you talk to him? Well, he kicked at a pebble embedded in the dirt. I tried, but he didn't want to hear it. Then I got worried you felt the same way. Berate him for his careless- oh, no. We're gonna do it Disney and let it go. Don't worry about it, no one was hurt in the end. He bashfully scratched the back of his head as if unable to tell whether I said that to be nice or from genuine relief. You sure? I mean, if that cement block hit you, do I look dead to you? That's so passive aggressive beyond belief! Why say that? Say I'm fine, don't say, oh well, do I look dead to you? Because you know, if I hadn't have reacted quicker, that cement block would have hit my head and then I'd be dead. What? Oh. You hurt me a little inside, Melissa. You hurt me a little inside. <laughs> Melissa, have you ever been to a website called um, Tumblr.com? I think you'd love it. No. Then it's okay. No one got injured and that's what mattered. You don't need to beat yourself up over it. I'm sure you feel bad enough as it is. Not angry at you either. It was an accident. Well, I mean, you did just passive aggressively say, do I look dead? Let's come on. Mm. The heat lamp shouldn't have been positioned there anyway. It was already a danger. I'm glad you weren't hurt. You nearly toppled off there. I was lucky. I had no idea Sho could react that fast. Chantal too, I highly doubt they could have stopped my fall alone. You were impressive yourself, shielding Kyla from the equipment. Yeah, I wish I hadn't. Only because I- uh, yeah, people have always told me I have fast reflexes. <laughs> I mean, that's not fast reflexes, that's thinking quickly. That's not hesitating. I avoided mentioning that I was able to take action because I glanced up by chance. There was enough guilt on his shoulders and he didn't need to know if I was tuned out, it might have ended differently. I'm glad you're okay. Now I need to return and help with the cleanup before Professor Dupont gets here. So I presume, had we gone for the beret him, we'd have just been like, oh god, I only happened to glance up by Charles. Had I not, I'd have died. Apparently that's what happens when something hits you from uh, about three or four feet up. You die, that's fun. We exchange cranes, don't get me wrong, I imagine it would hurt. You wouldn't die though, would you? It could just graze your fucking shoulder or miss you completely. We exchanged cringed expressions, but DeAndre gave me a clap to the shoulder to show he was going to face it head on. Right, I'll see you later, DeAndre. What heroes of the people? Let's play some more catch. And we go straight back to the cave the day after. Oh, they're just sitting around us, like, in a circle, being like, oh god, let's hope he's not gonna fuck it up again. Okie dokie, this one seems a little straightforward if we're being honest, but it's fine, um... Right, okay. I think this is it. Fuck. What did I do wrong? Everything looks like it's okay. Oh, I see what I did wrong. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> that. There's, there's meant to be one there, isn't there? Check. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, that, that looked completely fine. What was wrong with that? Uh, cave bear. Oh, we found fucking a few of those in our time here, haven't we? I climbed up both ladders intending to go outside for a break. Uh, a scene with you, I can't wait. I followed the industrial catwalk and noticed Show to my right. His square was next to the path and he had to be mindful of where he placed his buckets. 
Noticing he was excavating in a rather circular layer, I stopped to re-examine the situation. He dug out into an abundant, abandoned, not abundant, burrow, and with no indication that he acknowledged his presence. If Augustine spotted that, show. Hello, Melissa. Need something? Yeah, you're a fucking idiot. No, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, um, how to word this? He failed a spot check, show. What? He worryingly looked at his square, and I leaned over to gesture to the burrow. <laughs> You're digging into a terrier. This is it. It's this. I gently traced it with my finger. How did I miss it? I'm usually good at distinguishing colours. He removed his glasses, and it turns out that his eyes were furrowing through his eyebrows and were about an inch smaller than we thought they were. Then used the hem of his shirt to clean them up. Um, when you come across a burrow, what do you do? Uh, you do. <laughs> well, like an expert, apparently, after four weeks. You treat it like a separate layer to avoid mixing. The sediments were already muddled thanks to the badgers, so you place the contents into another bucket along with a document to identify it. <laughs> While he adjusted his glasses, I glanced behind us, looking at the wooden post with a heat lamp clamped to its side. When was the last time you moved it? Uh, not recently, I thought it was in a convenient spot. It's a nice angle, but the light will eventually bleach the exposed layers and it'll all look the same to you here. I tried to remove the clamp, but all I could do was jiggle it around awkwardly. <laughs> wow, this is a pain. Noticing my frustration, Sho stood up and extended an arm. This is one of the more difficult lamps, I got it. Using both hands, he pressed the clamp handles and removed the lamp from its post. Pressed. Uh, cautiously, he passed it over to me and I gripped the safe portions away from the heat. <laughs> Unlike last time. Return to your usual digging spot, let's see. While Sho knelt down, I hovered around his shoulder, angling the amp to highlight the vertical square. Does it stand out now? A little more to the left, stop there. He retreated to the wooden post in the cinder block and he pushed it up closer to me. And yeah, okay, he pushed up closer to me so I could clamp the lamp in place, or at least attempt to. Furrowing my eyebrows in concentration, I managed to wedge the clamp open enough to fix it onto its post. After some minor alterations, I glanced back to see Sho satisfied with the new placement. Thanks for that, I'll keep your advice in mind. Thanks, I'm a hero. It's not a problem, don't forget to adjust the lamps once in a while. Anyway, I'm heading out for a break. I can return with a bucket and a carré for a borrow if you'd like. If it's no trouble, it is fucking trouble, but I'll do it now you fucking asked. Sounds good, I'll see you in a bit. As I turned, I froze on the catwalk, realizing I was dangerously close to a cinder block positioned at the edge. <laughs> There was a, as if we're not looking out for that apparently, there was a wooden post inserted into it with a heat lamp clasped on, angled towards the square beside shows. Careful, it can't be a tight fit here. No kidding, later show. Wait, Melissa! Hmm. After exchanging looks, show gazed back down at the ground, his fingers reaching for the trowel. Thank you. If it's not too much trouble, when we're working at the same place, could you see how I'm doing? I mean, I'm not going to say that it's difficult to sort of like feel sympathy for you, but you look like a fucking otter when you do that. Jesus. And an overweight one too. Ugh. Cherie's, yeah, could you see how I'm doing? Cherie's always busy and I don't want to bother her. And Professor Dupont honestly scares me. He's fine. If you make a mistake, he drills it into you for a good 20 minutes and everyone can hear it. I can see why people prefer to ask Cherie or Hendrik. If you don't mind getting advice from a fellow student who's sometimes unsure of herself, I can't promise I'll know all the answers, but I'll do my best. I can stop by to see how you're doing. Thank you. I know it's imposing, so I appreciate it. Oh, I look forward to forgetting about it. I'm happy to help. Oh, right. On to the next scene we go. Oh, fucking failing at volunteering. This is definitely a filter over a light day. <laughs> Where are you really going to get patches as spotty as that? Ugh, whatever. Next episode!